up, everybody, and welcome to What's Up, Bree? Um, this is episode two of season three called Save an Emergency. I know usually when I come on here, I have my makeup done. I'm all smiling, happy, giddy in the mood, but I feel like today I wanted to take a step back um, because the uh, topics that I'm going to be talking about are something serious and something that I've been watching go on in media for years, and it's starting to hit home really hard. So I wanted to be serious and kind of slow things down a little bit, um, and that's why I named it State of Emergency. Before we start this episode, most importantly, what I want everybody to do, if you can, um, a very good friend of mine, Juan, um, her son, unfortunately, was hit by a vehicle. Um, he was out hanging out with his friends, normal, you know, being a kid, and a vehicle decided to speed down the street and ended up strict, str- sorry, struck him, drug him, and kept going. Um, so Trevor is fighting right now. Um, she did update everybody on social media to where his feeding tube is out. He is breathing on his own. So if everybody could please continue to keep Trevor and Juan in her, your prayers, she's actually having a fundraiser this Saturday. If you guys can kind of come out, if you go to her Facebook or Instagram, Juan Lee, um, you may know her for doing nails, please come out and support um, the cause. There's a lot of stuff going on in our hometown. Trevor's a, a really good kid, really great at soccer. And just seeing her go through that kind of affected me. Um, so please, Please keep her and your family in your prayers, please. Um, and people need to be very careful when they're driving. Um, I don't understand how you can hit a child or hit anyone for that matter and keep moving. Um, so I wanted to start the episode off with that. So please keep my friend, her son and her family in your prayers. Um, so moving forward, um, if you have been on social media, it has been things that have gone on for years. We've seen the color buying, mass shooting. Um, we've seen so many things happen in America that is ridiculous. But I think this one kind of shook people up a little bit. Um, In Texas, there was a school shooting at a grade school um, to where, unfortunately, 19 children were killed, two teachers were killed, and 17 others were wounded. Um, An 18-year-old decided that because he was getting bullied, Salvador Rolando, um, at school, that he was going to go to a kindergarten school, grade school, and kill a bunch of kids. Um, watching this play out in the news has been really frustrating because it's weird to me to when anybody does something wrong, they want to talk about, oh, this was a troubled teen. Oh, he was being bullied. Oh, he was going through so much. The only thing that I can think of, and of course, I don't think anybody deserves to lose their life at any point in time, but you were being bullied by kids your age. You didn't take a gun and go retaliate against the people that made you feel a certain way. You didn't go retaliate against the people that bullied you. You picked innocent children who know nothing about you, are helpless, can't fight back. Old people, elderly, and kids are the two most innocent people in the world. You decided to go into a school and shoot it up. I really don't understand that, and... With me not having kids, and the question is always posed, when are you going to have children? When are you going to have children? Situations like this deter me from wanting to bring children into this world. I cannot imagine as a parent dropping my child off at school, thinking they're going to come home, thinking I'm going to see them, and all of a sudden it's plastered all over the news and I'm getting phone calls, oh, there's been a shooting at the school. And knowing that there's a possibility that your child will not walk out alive. Um, Another thing that kind of bothered me with reading headlines and kind of reading into it with like news outlets, CNN, world news and things of that nature, the way that the police decided to react to the situation. Um, Usually I kind of speak off the top of my mind when I'm doing my episodes, but tonight I wanted to be very precise um, and be very accurate with what I was providing and the information that I was putting out. Um, So from what it was said is officers arrived on the scene within minutes. So, you know, there's an active shooter. This is a school children are in there they waited over an hour to take action while everything is going on while these shootings are going on other children are calling the police calling 911 saying hey there's an active shooter in the building we need help no moves were made um in the span of the hour and 15 minutes that this horrendous (laughs) activity took place eight different calls were received Over an hour and 15 minutes, you have multiple phone calls coming in from inside of a school that you guys are standing out of. And you you know that there are children in there. You know gunshots are going off. There's fatalities. It was sick to a point to where a child was on the phone telling them there's still eight or nine of us alive. We need help. At what point do you decide taking action or your life is not more important than a child's life? When you become a police officer, 
when you join the armed forces, you take an oath to protect and serve. You are well aware of what could happen. You may not come home. It may be you, unfortunately. It may be your family that has to bury you. So for grown men and women to wear a badge and sit outside of a school and know kids are being gunned down and to not take action, I can't believe it. Like, I, I honestly, truly, reading these articles and kind of watching everything play out on the news, it, it was disgusting to me. Um, and then for the commissioner to say, oh, we're going to do an investigation and kind of figure out what happened. Everybody who reported to that scene that day should be fired. I don't care if you guys have to start from fucking scratch or where you have to find police officers from. If you have to pull them from different counties or states, everybody who came to that call and did not take action should be fired. It doesn't make sense to me how a teacher calls her off duty husband and say, hey, I love you. She texts him, actually. Hey, I love you. Active shooter. We not might not make it. This man is at the barbershop getting his haircut. So he's brave enough to stop what he's doing, go get his gun, get his wife and child out of the school and then go back and take the shooter down. At what point did you guys realize that that's the action that you should have taken? And what makes it even worse, Boy, he, he's the one that actually killed the active I, I shooter. Didn't, I knew he killed him. I didn't know he went in and got his kid and his wife yeah, first. Yeah, first, yes. And went back. Because what he could have did is what the rest of the cops did and fucking sat there. Hey, I have my two. But instead, he took his job serious enough to say, okay, yes, I'm going to make sure my kids get out first. But I'm also going to go back and make sure no other kids are injured. Border Patrol was there. <laughs> Border Patrol belonging to a specialized unit armed at 1215, but, not take, but did not take action until 30 minutes later. I don't understand it. That's interesting because the story that the first story that I read mm -hmm. made it appear that Border Patrol, in conjunction with the police department, got in and took the took the shooter down. That's how no. they that's how they spun the narrative. No. And that's another thing. I was watching Fox 6 News and CNN last night and there was a headline. I don't know if you guys it's kind of a bird moment, but it relates to it. Um, it was saying that a train ran into a hot air balloon and I'm sitting there and I'm same thing I said and I'm listening and I'm like, a train runs into a hot air balloon, okay? A train is on the tracks. Hot air balloon is in the sky. How the fuck did a train run into a hot air balloon? Don't you mean a hot air balloon landed in, on train tracks? <laughs> and that's just the way that the news spins stuff. And I'm saying that to say this. The way that they spent this shooting to make it seem as if, oh, police officers were on duty. They did their job. We wanted to be strategic. There is no right way to help children and teachers that are dying. You take action. You put your life on the line. You go into the school. There is no reason that kids are dead. And now they're doing a thing to where they're teaching kids tactics. If there's an active shooter, if you're in the front of the classroom, you jump up and down and you make noise and make it apparent for you to be able to be harmed so that the other kids can get away. One of the most disturbing drills I had to do as a school administrator mm -hmm. was an active shooter drill. So how did they teach you guys to deal with the active shooter? Um, they first you have to if you're in a classroom, mm -hmm. lock your doors, move the entire classroom away from the door and the window and sit quietly. Okay. So the drill was to have each classroom be super quiet so that uh, if an active shooter is walking through the halls they are under the impression that all the classrooms are are, are not occupied okay so they you know and we made it appear like if there's any inkling of any type because they'll go and knock on the door they'll scream they'll try to you mm -hmm. know uh, anything they can do to try to get the door open and you know coerce somebody to open the door and just do not open the door and it lasts for about 10 minutes. Okay. So you have, you know, as a teacher, just imagine it being a teacher and having 20 kids in a classroom completely silent during a drill. Right. Um, I can imagine that actually. I mean, and now at that 10 minutes, you're thinking, man, this could actually be some real shit. Like, mm -hmm. it just actually happened. And they actually, they lived through it. They had to live through it. That's very, very scary. It is. And even as teachers, teachers are there to teach. Like, let's be clear. Teachers are a lot of things. And I always say this, that I feel like teachers are underpaid. Them 
EMTs. EMTs are the people that kind of take care of people before you even get to the nurses or doctors. So they're the ones that's trying to keep that person alive so that way you can be operated on, so that way you can get a full check to see kind of where you're bleeding or what's going on. Teachers are underpaid. They're counselors. Sometimes they're parents. Sometimes they're therapists. One thing they should not have to be is protectors in that type of way. If there's a situation to where maybe kids are picking on each other in class or bullying each other, okay, cool, it's understandable. It's high school, it's middle school. You're going to go through some shit. But little kids that have no care in the world, a teacher having to know, okay, if somebody comes in here with a gun, my job is basically to make sure that you guys are safe. I remember me and my friend went hiking last week, Saturday, and a little girl was with her dad, and she was like, I'm not scared of anyone. Nothing can hurt me, Dad. And all I can think about was the shooting because kids have that complex to where they just want to have fun. They want to go outside. They want to ride bikes. They don't really grasp what's going on around us. So I can only imagine what was going through the kid's head, especially the ones that are trying to call 911 and get help. Like, hey, some of us are still alive, and you can get us out of here come help us I didn't understand that but to go back to the shooter this all could have been prevented um last year there was a situation to where he actually threatened people at the school that he was with and kind of made the inclement that he was going to do something shoot up the school whatever whatever police came he was taken in he was held for about two days they took him to a mental hospital they released him Um, They interview friends, people saying that his mood changed. He would just flip out at any given moment. So these are signs that led up to this moment. Um, He purchased guns and ammunition days after his 18th birthday. Um, And they said he was bullied over a speech impediment. Something that can be corrected with time as you get older, something that can be fixed. And it's like, We've all been bullied before, I think. When I was in high school, I was super skinny, awkward, didn't have a shape. Of course, everybody's seen the post where they said if you were dark skinned in school, it was bad. You was always a tar baby or a black this, black that, whatever, whatever. I've been bullied. We all have. Nothing has ever prompted me to want to reach out and harm anybody else, especially not a child. So when the news tries to spin it, oh, he was bullied as a kid or... Oh, he went through a lot. He was poor. He was living in poverty. That's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. I feel like some of the most successful people I know or some of the most resilient people I know have been through things as kids. Them going through bullying or them going through poverty made them want to work their ass off to where what I went through as a child does not have to affect me moving forward. I'm going to break the cycle. I'm going to make sure to where I'm not wearing bust down shoes or the same clothes or I'm going to bed not being able to eat or I don't have my own bed. I don't have my own room. You decide what your life turns out to be. You can shape whatever you want your reality to be growing older. It's a choice. He made a choice that day. Um, And he actually turned 18 May 16th and purchased the weapons on May 17th and days later decided to shoot up a school. And I don't understand that. And prior to all of this happened, everybody knows about the Buffalo supermarket shooting um, to where that was racially motivated. So to talk about that a little bit, um, an 18 year old Caucasian man um, researched the local demographic and drove to the area the day prior. So he stayed two hours away from where the shooting took place. And they were able to kind of get a 180 page document, they stated, of how he was going to plan out the shooting and exactly what he was going to do, what areas he was going to go to. So he intentionally targeted a race. And it's my bottling to me because everybody's like, oh, people grow up on hate. And then they're talking to his family. They're fully cooperating. But I need to know where he got this from. This is something that he's seen. Racism isn't something that you're born with. You're taught this. You're conditioned to hate other races. So the under, the 180 page document was a document he authored. He wrote. He wrote that. They're trying to verify that it was him. Okay. But that's what it sounded like. Yes. I don't know. No, I don't know nobody who willing to write 180 pages, let alone an 18 year old. And so that's what puts the question in there to where is this something that your parents conditioned you to, and now you're kind of taking the bait for it and the fall for it. Um, 
But yeah, his goal was when he spoke to the police, police was to kill as many African-Americans as possible. Those were the exact words that came out of his mouth. Um, I, 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 I don't get it. Ten people were murdered. Um, they went through his laptop. He was visiting sites about white supremacy. Um, and they stated that during the attack, he almost shot a Caucasian person that was kind of hiding behind something. Mm-hmm. He stopped, apologized, and did not shoot. Dude apologized. He apologized. Um, and this is just some of the things that are going on in the world. And it's so weird to me because when it comes to politics and politicians, you guys can put rules and standards about abortions and how a woman should or should not carry her body. But you cannot figure out the gun laws for shit. And it's all because it's, it's money motivated. It's money and power. Yeah. Because historically, our nation has been built on the freedom of to bear arms yes. and to fight uh, and be able to, you know, and fight and, and protect yourself. That's majority of, of how this nation is built. So they're not going to, they're not going to change that law. Unfortunately, they're not. Yeah, gonna they're not. It. And and then of course I was speaking to somebody the other day and we kind of had a conversation and they were saying mass shootings. Well, what we consider as mass shootings, this is acceptable. And reason being is because, Population control, gun laws, um, and and it makes sense to them at some point. I don't understand as to why an eighteen year old you can't drink until you're twenty one. You're technically weed is a, a big thing to where people are spending years in jail from drug laws. Usually, the age to kind of become a person is twenty one, but at the age of eighteen, if I want to. I can purchase a long gun is what they call it. So those are the rifles, the AR-15s, and shotguns. I can go buy one and just kind of be willy-nilly. And don't get me wrong, I totally understand as to why some people do carry guns. Because people are crazy and you do have to protect yourself, especially women. I talk about this all the time. I feel like if you are a woman, you should carry some type of protection whether it's mace a knife a pistol shit a machete at this point something because we all know people just know how to cut up and they don't act right but when people are not programmed right they're not taught properly as far as what guns should technically be used for it should strictly be for protection but a person made a comment to me the other day and they said what's the first thing somebody says when y'all get into it i'm gonna go get my gun and shoot your ass it's not, oh, we can fight or we can have a intellectual conversation as to why we are not agreeing on something. I'm going to go get my gun. And the America has made it so easy for the gun to be the solution to every single last problem. I'm just going to shoot you. It's even so much so that I'm going to beat your ass means and get my gun. It's inferred. Like you already know that that's next. Yeah. It ain't just going to be a fight because if you lose, they're going to shoot you. And that's the thing. Like, I was just talking to my dad about it before I got here. I used to be wild as a as a young adult. What? Yeah. I went to four <laughs> different high schools. I was ready to fight. And I remember a time to where me and a girl was arguing over some boy. Typical teenage girl shit that I'm glad I grew out of. And she gave me her address. And she was like, oh, pull up. Right. And guess what me and my friends did? We pulled up. Luckily, <laughs> my friends were paying attention because I could have lost my life that day because she had a hammer. And I did not notice. So I'm running up to fight her. And my friend's sister jumps in between us and says, nah, uh, uh, and she snatches something out the girl's hand. And I'm like, what the fuck going on? Like, what's going on? She had a whole hammer. So me thinking I'm badass and you gave me your address, I'm a pull up. That situation could have went totally left to where then my friend would have had to call my mom like, hey, we're either at the hospital or you need to come down here to identify your daughter because... She came over here to fight some boy and she got hit in the head. Wow. There's been so much violence and and anger going on in the world. And it's like, I know it's frustrating. There's a lot of shit going on. Everybody's talking about inflation. And unless you really do your research on on inflation or or what's going on, and I've had to kind of read articles and talk to other people that are a little bit more seasoned with it as well. It's a bigger picture. The world has to operate. A person was explaining to me the reason as to why they let the Ukraine refugees come over here is because they're technically of Caucasian descent. White people 
And I'm not speaking about just race. This is a mindset. This is social culture from what the person explained to me. They are afraid because they feel like they're going to be extinct soon. They're going to be the minority. They're going to be the poverty. The world and the way that they see it is going to be no more. Hmm. So we're go- it's an economic war so, right so now. The, this is a balance. Yeah. It's, the balance it's that- balancing it out. Huh. So it's like, okay, there's so much shit going on in Haiti. There's so much shit going on in other countries, in Mexico. Mm-hmm. The border has been fucked up over there for years. Mm-hmm. We can't house them, but you can let almost 2 million Ukraine people mm-hmm. come over here. It's because they're technically of the Caucasian descent. Mm-hmm. which is why the abortion laws are going the way that they're going. And the person was kind of explaining to me too. Caucasian people get abortions all the time. We don't know about it though. Mm-hmm. They know people are in higher places to where it's not going to be on paper listed as an abortion, but that's exactly what they did. So statistically it works on the behalf, on their behalf to not have that happen. And actually it goes in, in what's called ebbs and flows mm-hmm. because 30 years from now, abortion, it'll, it'll come back up. Yeah. And it'll be allowed. And they make it seem as if it's just the minorities that get food stamps or live off of the government. Hell, we've all rolled past the 12th Street Village <laughs> before. We know what the building looked like. And you see other races out there. But when it's talked about in the media, it's always the minority. They're the ones that don't want to work. They're the ones that want to just continue to have kids. And it's weird to me because I Google the minority population, how, how many African-Americans there technically are in the world. In 2021, they said we made up 13.4%. Ain't no fucking way to me that we only made up 13.4%. I see black people, African-American people everywhere I go. And it's like, if that's 13.4%, well, damn. Right. But then I have to look at it this way. And another person was explaining to me, think about when they do census. So if you're a felon, you can't vote. So you're technically not counted. And then, of course, African-Americans don't want to fill out that information anyway. So we may lie Mm -hmm. or we may not fill out at all. So we're technically not counted. It's it's, it's weird to me how the world is working and shifting. And I feel like a lot of people just need to be aware. I'm getting myself aware. I'm reading. I'm changing my habits. I'm watching news. I've never used to watch the news. And my excuse was always every time you watch the news, there's some fucked up shit going on. I don't want to see that. I don't want to hear about killings. I don't want to hear about shootings. I don't want to hear about, I don't care for politics. I definitely vote. I exercise my right to vote because I feel like that's very important. They make it so easy for you to be disqualified from making a choice of who can run the world, which really doesn't matter anyway, because that's based off of money. Who they present to us, Joe Biden isn't running shit. He's being paid to execute and push out plans that other people want to take place. He's just basically the face, the bad guy, somebody to blame, somebody to present this but he's definitely not tur- turning the wheels to this at all um but yeah i also googled how many mass shootings has it been in 2022 and so far 213 213 this year uh, yeah yeah yes yes what, yes yes, what, yes. Uh, what, not that you have this down but mm-hmm. does it define or what that what constitute it? And I, that was going to be my next thing. I made sure to look that up because mass shootings to us, we think, oh, that's just somebody going to shoot up a school, somebody yeah. shooting up a park, somebody right. shooting up a church. So investigative assistance for violent crimes, 2012, this is what they made the rule for mass shootings. Three or more killings in a single incident. That is considered a mass shooting. And technically speaking, the way that you think about it, I would consider that a mass shooting as well because it's not you're just targeting one person. You out for blood and nine times out of 10, even if it's a simple situation to where somebody has cheated on you and you like, oh, my heart is broken. My feelings are hurt. I'm about to pull up and kill every fucking body here. If you knew about it, I'm about to kill him. If your friend knew about it, just like with the situation with the girl, Brittany, to where she tried to intervene with the domestic abuse situation and she lost her life. It's situations like that to where guns make people feel so powerful. The scariest person on earth can go buy a gun, can pick up a gun and shoot somebody and make their self seem tough. And I just want people to wake up, see what's going on around you. Get prepared. A lot of people are saying, oh, we're about to go through a recession and things of that nature. Have you ever thought about when COVID was going on and the PPP loans were coming out? Mm -hmm. Everybody had money. Everything was going on. And 
Why do you think gas prices are up? Making up for all that time that we went buying the gas. <laughs> Why do you think grocery store prices are up? Where do you guys think that that money <laughs> came from? It was money we didn't have to begin with in the first fucking place. We, we don't have money to give. We're in debt. We're a trillion of dollars. We're in debt. You ever see that sign on 43 or 94? Yeah. Or and every five seconds. Pay attention to it. <laughs> see how much debt the U.S. is in. But this is the land of the free. This is supposed to be the greatest country on earth where everybody can go. You can make your dreams come mm-hmm. true and everything can be awesome and great. This is the most fucked up country, to be quite frank. There's other countries to where you don't even have to pay for education. Which you shouldn't. I have to go to school, get hundreds of thousand dollars sometimes in student debt to be able to go into a career to where even if I do make decent money, I'm struggling the first couple of years. Like certain shows like watching Grey's Anatomy, I didn't know residents only made probably about $60,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So for five or eight years, I'm living off of a, a basic salary. I'm sleep deprived. I'm continuously having to learn and remember things and take tests and stay focused and stay on top of my game. And then when I finally make it to the point to where I can make money, it's like, okay, I'm going to enjoy myself. I see why people are in debt. I see why people are out here buying extravagant cars. They're trying to find happiness in materialistic things. Mm -hmm. And I used to be one of those people, too. I'm a girl. I do like nice shit. I will never stop liking nice shit. But I had to put my mind in a set to where am I buying these things because I actually like it? Or am I buying it to kind of make myself happy at a point? Am I buying it to make up for something that I feel like is lacking or missing? And don't get me wrong, I will still always possibly buy a Louis Vuitton bag or possibly buy me some nice shoes and things of that nature. But it's not a requirement or a necessity. And I feel like with that shooting that happened, the way that social media is programming people these days, it's like if you don't have a nice car or a foreign car, your car don't mean shit. I have a Lexus and I say this all the time. It's a higher end Toyota. I don't want nobody else saying that shit to me, but I can say it because I know if you go and look at a 2022, 2021 Toyota from the back and the front outside of the Lexus symbol, it looks just like a regular Toyota. That's not a bad statement, but I yeah. know what I know what you mean. That's, yeah. I mean, Toyota, like to me, Toyota is probably the most reliable car. you can Very get. reliable. Like, and people say Toyota, Honda. No, not Honda. Toyota. Toyota. Honda is like a, it got the reputation because it's foreign, but I drove a Toyota without changing the oil, without getting a, uh, a tune-up, without doing anything other than getting tires and brakes. And I drove it until it had 120,000 miles on it. And that's when I needed a tune-up. I had to get a tune-up because the car stopped running. Literally. Get, and that was I just needed a new, uh, some new spark plugs. The only thing that I did on my Lexus is brakes and tires and oil mm-hmm. changes. I haven't had to do anything dramatic. Mm-hmm. Like no thousands of dollars put into my car. Let me knock on something because I don't want to go outside and some shit happen. <laughs> um, but I haven't had to do anything. And I, and I feel like even I got caught up in that with getting a Lexus. Don't get me wrong. Love my car to death. Um, but you can get caught up sometimes in social media and it makes you feel as if you're less than. Just like with Salvador saying, oh, he was picked on about his speech impediment. Take a speech class. There, there's ways for those type of situations to be corrected. Find solutions versus, and I said this today on my status, versus soaking in it and saying, oh, I'm being picked on. I'm being bullied. I'm a victim. So somebody bullies you and you go bully somebody else. It just it doesn't make sense to me. And it's weird because I see so many people talking about all the mass shootings that are going on and everything in the world, but nobody's talking about what's going on in our back door. The city of Milwaukee is in a crisis. Wisconsin is in a crisis. There was a, did you see that somebody interviewed the Kia boys and then put it on YouTube? Yeah. Prime example for that. <laughs> like, we have teenagers that think it's okay to steal people cars and joyride and crash them and either kill themselves or hurt somebody else or they gather their friends and they're riding around and they get injured too and nobody is doing anything about it where are the parents in this situation at this point and then the police are either chasing them to where they are crashing or it's a situation to where oh we'll just give them a slap on the wrist or put them in juvenile detention then we'll let them out and guess where they're getting out and doing the same thing it's like a repetitive cycle And when I was watching like a snippet of it, I didn't watch the full little documentary or whatever the guy did on YouTube. I am going to check it out to kind of 
see what was going on. But he said, stay dangerous. It's going to be a bloody summer. Which leads me to believe, so you guys are out here stealing cars and joyriding and, and things of that nature. And these are things that people worked hard for. There was one second. I, I, I did watch it. Mm-hmm. And it was more of a big, they big up in them, the, the act, as opposed to, like, informing me on what was going on. Mm-hmm. But I did wait to hear what the response was regarding, does your mother, your parents know what you're doing? Mm-hmm. And two of them was like, uh, well, she don't know what I'm doing, but she know I got a case for it. One, she, I got, I got one case for it. Then she's they aware. They both said it. Yeah, they both said that they, because they, you know, they got pending cases regarding it, but they're still out there doing it. Love your children. It starts at home. I, I'm not a parent. I was raised by a single mother. I watched my sister raise my nephews. I watched my friends raise their kids, and. A lot of these kids in the world that are doing mass shootings or even adults that are doing mass shootings, it's the lack of love. They they feel like they're lacking something and they're frustrated. And that's one thing that I had to teach myself. Find happiness in something else. Instead of thinking about materialistic things or getting a girl of your dreams or a guy of your dreams or chasing money, find happiness within yourself first and foremost self-love is the best love that you can have because if you love yourself enough what somebody else says about you how somebody else treats you it won't hurt as much we're all human so there's things that are going to be said there are things that are going to be done that's going to hurt us that's going to affect us that may make us cry but love yourself enough to where past and beyond all of that it's not going to send you into a snapped state of mind to where you feel like the best thing that you can do is shoot up a fucking school, shoot up a subway, go into a hospital and shoot it up. That shit happened today. Mm-hmm. You're upset because you're having back pain and obviously you have an opioid addiction and the doctor didn't help you in the way that he wanted to or he made your back worse than what it was already doing so you go in and you kill him and then you kill other colleagues innocent people that had nothing to do with what's going on i don't understand it so the point of this episode was basically just to educate people to where you have to pay attention to what's going on in the world you need to get prepared for the state of emergency that we're about to get ready to go in and you need to be strategic about it invest your money Save your money. Stop throwing your money away on materialistic things or things that hold no value. Educate yourself. Reading is very fundamental. I've always loved to read, but even now more than ever, I'm getting into books. Books that are talking about spiritual guidance, ways to push yourself forward, ways to become a millionaire, ways to handle anger. Meditate. Do yoga. Go on walks. Whatever it is. Do something that's going to make it to where if you feel as if you're having a hard time or you're at that point of breaking down or you don't want to do it no more or you feel like you're about to snap, find a safe place and find a safe haven and bask in that. Um, There's too many killings going on. There's too many kids dying. There's too many elderly people dying. Too many people are homeless. There's so many things that are going on in the world and we can't tackle them all. But the best thing that you can do is is educate yourself, read books, make yourself aware, and find happiness within yourself. That's the best advice that I can give. Um, Prayers go out to all the families for the shooting in Texas, the shooting that happened in Brooklyn, also the shooting that happened at the hospital today, Um, all the shootings and killing that have been happening in Milwaukee in general. Um, We need to do better as a people. We need to push ourselves forward. And we need to kind of get out of what we're used to as far as what the normal is considered for the world. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me tonight. Um, I hope to see you next week. And that concludes the episode of this week. So don't stay dangerous. Stay knowledgeable. Okay.